Well, folks, welcome to one more edition of Politics and Randomic. Berto is your host. Thank you so kindly for being a part of the show. We are going to have a great show for you today. Please always remember this show is yours. This show belongs to you. Anyhow, uh, look, please, if you're just joining us, if you're on, on Facebook Live, please go ahead and share this. If you're on Twitch, please go ahead and share it. If you're on Twitter, please go ahead and share it. If you are on YouTube, please go ahead and share it. That is how we make a difference today. Look, I have three interviews that I have in the bag, but I'm not going to do it today because... This Texas story is big, and I want everybody listening to this Texas story to understand what republicanism means on steroid. So I decided to forego. I, I, I interviewed um, uh, uh, Dr. Professor Richard Wolf yesterday, uh, last night actually, and a very, very good interview, but it's going to take too much time to show on, uh, on today. Uh, this morning, I also interviewed... A, a, one of the candidates that's running against uh, Wisconsin Senator Ron Johnson. And I also interviewed Ben uh, uh, Ben from uh, uh, Ben Dixon, a guy that you see on MSNBC, also has his own independent network. I have all of these that's going to be coming starting tomorrow and through the, the week, and we're still uh, getting some other good people to, um, to, to, to get, on, get on the show. But uh, today, I really, uh, I don't want to call this a personal thing. This is not a personal thing. Though I think uh, at, in the moment when people are suffering, uh, those of us who are not suffering the pains of this cataclysmic uh, power event in Texas, which could go in either direction right now, we have very poor management of a grid. We have very poor management of our generators because of Republican policy that says, let's put money first. The Republican policy that says to hell with regulation and just not to be regulated, we are going to do it on our own. It sounds good when everything is working right, but folks, we don't need the government when everything is working right. We need the government when things aren't working the best. We need the government as a backstop. We can all take care of ourselves just fine when everything is working fine. But when things are not working fine, that is a definition of societal support, collective collectivity. That is what government stands for. And that is when we need government the most. And when we have people who don't understand government, who use government as a method of transferring wealth of the others, of most of us to a few, by using technicality and by fooling people, by lying to people, then that becomes a problem. And henceforth today... I am hoping, please stay with me. Please go ahead and share this program. I am imploring you. Let's talk. You can also call into the program uh, because, uh, look, I, I want to hear from you if, you if you have the will to speak as well. Uh, you can either come through us via Zoom or you can call in the telephone number that we, are going to, that we have on the screen right now. If you're just looking at your feed right now, I'm going to put that information to get to us on the screen. That is... On the screen, I have the Zoom that you can, uh, the, the link that you can click on if you're on a computer to talk to us directly, or you can call us at 346 248 7799. Code is 254 600 9091. Again, you can either link to us by uh, that link on the screen, or 346 248 7799, and the code is 254 600 9091. Barbara Fetante, love you too. Love you too. Tell Danny I say hi. Love you guys. You guys are the absolute best. Thank you so kindly for always being there to support. Mark Smith, welcome aboard from London. Uh, Bridge MCP, our dear leader of the, uh, the, the PDR Posse. Thank you so kindly for being here. Uh, let's see. GS Gunner, welcome aboard. Indiana Bones, welcome aboard. Michael Rudnan, welcome aboard. Michael says, this would lift the boot off the necks of young people by canceling, uh, let's see, Nina Turner. We need to cancel student loan debt, all of it. Uh, I have a person who thinks not, but we'll discuss that on another day. Uh, Biden dismisses a Democratic plan to wipe out $50,000 in federal student loan debt. Huge mistake on Joe Biden's part. He's going to lose base support for this. It's a bit more complicated than that. I mean, if he goes ahead and just goes outright with it, he may actually run into a problem where people say that is uh, welfare for the rich, but we can talk about that at another time. Bridge, uh, let's see, B. Polar, my brother Bruce, welcome aboard. 
I just heard, I just saw somebody say Norman. I didn't see Norman in the room, uh, uh, Bridge, but if you see, if Norman is in the room, welcome aboard, Norman. And of course, there's Tank 28. Look, if you're with us, share, please share, please share. Nanette Bird Smith. Yes, if, if we could we could actually get cut off because around the corner there are people that are just been cut off a few hours ago. Linda E, welcome aboard. Okay, uh, here is the deal. Here is the deal. Let me show you what the program is about today. Let me bring it up first of all. It helps if I go ahead and bring the program up. Title of the show today is The Texas Electric Grid Collapse is Republican Governance in Action Like COVID and Healthcare. He was like, Berto, why are you being partisan? Why are you being partisan? I am, look, I am a progressive. I am a progressive. Okay? I am, I go with whomever is passing progressive policies to move us all along. I welcome, Kathy Pascal, welcome aboard. Uh, here is the deal. I want all these policies to support everyone. These policies are not just for Democrats, not just for progressives, not just for liberals, not, not just for Republicans, anarchists, conservatives, right-wingers. It's for all of us. That's what we believe in. That's the code, the modus operandi of progressives. We may not come out and say, hey, we love you guys, all that kind of stuff to all our brothers and sisters on the right, but we do. Unfortunately, many times the policies that you all support goes against love for yourself, goes against love for all. Because what's happening in Texas today is, a, is just the manifestation of what we have always tried to avoid. You know, people say all the time, oh, we want to deregulate. We want to deregulate stuff. We want to cut taxes. You know, when you're doing that at the top, you don't really see the problems, right? You create a low-tax state. And big companies start to come into your state because it's low tax. And you give them abatements. You allow them to get tax breaks. You cut, you cut the, the rug from under your small businesses. But you are going to bring these big guys into your, your state. You charge low taxes, but in charging those low taxes, you're poor people. People have to pay so much for education, they can't educate themselves. So these big companies come. California educate their people. New York educate their people. All these other high-tax states educate their people. And then when these companies come to Texas and otherwise, all the high-paid jobs go to these educated people that in the aggregate come with those companies. And then, and then, we wonder why we have all this disparity in Texas. We wonder why so many Texans are dying. They're dying now from health care because we didn't take the Affordable Care Act, the, uh, the uh, Medicaid expansion to the Affordable Care Act. They're now dying because they're freezing because the regulations were not there to regulate the different parts of our energy grid. Even the green energy, which is overperforming right now, as we are going to play the videos that show the lies of our politician. But even the green energy, it's overperforming relative to everything else. But even that, because of lax regulation, they didn't have the necessary, you know, they didn't have the necessary things to keep them from freezing their blades. I mean, it, it works in Denmark, Antarctica. It works in Iowa, as you're going to see now. So let's go ahead and get started. The first video I'm going to show you, first video I'm going to show you is, is from a Texas journalist. And he's going to tell you, our Lord and Savior, our Jesus Christ, our Mahatma, our, 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 our uh, 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 Mohammed, our whatever. You know what it is? Let's go ahead and listen to uh, uh, before before we do that, Jen Psaki was interviewed, and of course, Texas, the catastrophe is so big in Texas that everybody's seeing it. They're all seeing the catastrophe in Texas. So it made it to the to the press conference today. 
And here is Jen Psaki. She was not going to answer this question because she doesn't have, it's not for her to answer. But the wonderful thing that occurs is she used it to show that the policies that Texas is using, the policies that they are using, are job destroyers. And she's also going to show that it's not only that they're job destroyers, but what really failed wasn't green energy. So let's listen to Jen Psaki make a point from a question, and then we'll take it on the other side. About a decade ago, federal regulators suggested they urged Texas to weatherize its power grid. Um, that largely did not happen, or it certainly didn't happen enough. Uh, and of course, it was only a suggestion because Texas is not part of the national grid. Um, you may have seen that Rick Perry, the former energy secretary and governor of Texas, had, uh, has said today that uh, Texans would rather endure days of blackouts than submit to federal regulation. Is the president willing to leave 30 million Texans off of the national grid? There's a lot packed into that question. Uh, I, will, I will do my best to answer it. Um, let me first say that um, uh, building resilient and sustainable infrastructure that can withstand extreme weather and a changing climate will play an integral role in creating millions of good paying union jobs, creating a clean energy economy and meeting the president's goal of reaching a net zero emissions future by 2050 and also will, will be uh, beneficial uh, in future storms. I will say that there has been some uh, inaccurate accusations out there. I'm not sure if former Secretary uh, Perry made these, but uh, that it was the fit that that suggested um, that uh, renewables caused failures um, in Texas's power grid. And actually, numerous reports have actually shown the contrary, that it was failures in coal and natural gas that contributed to the state's power shortages. And officials at the Electric Reliability Council of Texas, which operates the state's power grid, have gone so far as to say that failures in wind and solar were the least significant factors in the blackouts. I, I know that wasn't exactly your question, but I just wanted to convey that since there's been a lot of confusion about it. She subsequently told the reporter, but go ahead and talk to the Energy Department about what they need to do in Texas. But the important thing is, I love Jen. Jen does not let an opportunity to push the truth out with respect to policy when she gets it. And that reporter, even though she knew she was not going to answer that reporter's question directly, she used his segue to point out that, let me tell you what your Texas Republican government is doing for you. By not fully embracing ref uh, uh, renewable energy. And by the way, we are one of the states that are best using uh, the windmills, etc., but we're not fully using it as, as given the st size of our state, right? But that you are foregoing, you are foregoing by not doing renewable energy. You are foregoing a lot of jobs, a lot of high paying jobs. And not only that, with renewable energies, a lot of the problems that you have with the frozen gas and all of that, that becomes academic. Because right now, what's killing Texas is we can't get the gas in the right volumes because of temperature to the power plants. And the nuclear plants, because of ice and other things, uh, have to be down because we have to make sure we can cool them appropriately. And of course, there, is a co there are the coal plants who have to take... I mean, look, Texas right now is a man-made mess. The grid has shown its colors... The grid has shown that the private sector that we all that we all think is infallible. Remember, that is how our system works. We have the power generators that are private. We have the grid that is run by the government. And then they say, hey, could you please send us some power here? Hey, could you please send us some power here? And then when the private sector says, oh, I am sorry, I can't send you power because we can't get gas. I can't send you power because our meters are frozen. I can't send you... Wait a minute. Shouldn't the, isn't the free... Isn't the private market, the private system optimized? Isn't it optimized that you don't make those mistakes because you're so much more efficient? Let me explain something about the private sector. I have nothing against the private sector. I had a software company. I had several other companies. Here's the other thing. I love pizza shops. 
private. I love grocery stores, private. I love almacenes, um, uh, grocery, uh, um, regular stores in the mall, private. I love to have the big box stores, private. I love even Amazon if it were more uh, broken down, private. But anything, and those of you that listen to me all the times hear this all the times, but anything that is dependent, that we depend on, you cannot leave it to the private sector because the private sector doesn't think about what could happen in the future and hurt you. The private sector says, I've got to make a profit today, tomorrow, and thereafter. And if in between those, today and tomorrow, there is a blip where you die, well, it's a cost of doing business. And to, tell, to put it bluntly, there are times that they make sacrifices figuring out if we do this and you die and you sue us for $2 million, we would have already made $10 million. It's just like the opioid epidemic. They don't mind paying billions of dollars because they've already taken billions away from you. An evil enterprise when done that way. So there are certain, certain parts of our society that do not belong in the private sector. And the uh, power generation is one of them. And when we learn that, when we learn that, either if you're going to have it in a private sector, it has to be very regulated. But hell, if you have to have it very regulated, might as well keep it out of there. And that extra profit that goes to the shareholders, that extra profit that goes into executive pay, why not give it to the people in the form of lower prices for your electricity? Let's have a policy that gives people what's best for them. They can have their own pizza shop. They can have all these, they build cars private, do all those things privately. But things like healthcare and energy, those things belong in the public sector. That's where they belong. And today, and especially, look, Republicans want to do nothing about climate change. One of the reasons we get these bad weather incidences is because of climate change, which gets more, and they show they cannot handle it. Please, people, when we go to the voting booth, we have to start making it. So why am I talking? Uh, why am I talking about this? Why am I talking about this right now? I want to just let me tell you what the right wing does. If you notice, well, I tell you what. Let's play the other video uh, with uh, w with what uh, Rick Perry had to say, and then we'll take it on the other side. Rick Perry believes. Rick Perry believes that. He can order the suffering of Texans because in his imagination, Texans would prefer to feel the pain of cold, feel the pain of not having any energy because we don't want the government, the federal government telling us what to do. So we want to feel the pain. Have you ever heard a Floridian complain, a Californian complain? Florida is on the East Coast grid. California is on the West Coast grid. Have you ever heard North Dakota or South Dakota, very red states? Have you ever heard Louisiana complain about the, the, sh the, the shoe on the neck by the federal government on us because they control, because they have regulation on our grid? No, we haven't heard that. This has nothing to do with regulation. We'll talk about that later, but listen to Rick Perry or what, what they have to say here. Let's put that graphic back up. That's Rick Perry basically saying that uh, Texans uh, would be willing to go through days of blackouts uh, in order to keep the state or the federal government out of the state's power grid. That's right there. Former Texas Governor Rick Perry suggests that going days without power is a sacrifice Texans should be willing to make. Um, and it goes on. Bill Karens, what's next for Texas? What is next for this storm? Well, as far as the weather's concerned, it's a different story. As far as what Texas goes, you know, winterizing everything they were supposed to do 10 years ago, and the feds told them they should have. I mean, they took a gamble. They took a risk. They said, you know, in the late 1800s, we were this cold. They said, it's not going to get that cold again. We don't need to winterize. We're not going to spend the money on that. And they took that gamble and that risk. And now we've had a once-in-a-lifetime historic cold snap right over the top of Texas with two snowstorms in between. And now we're in the situation that we're in with the energy. I mean, 
they said earlier today, 40 percent of the gener generators are down right now. And that's actually typical in the wintertime because their peak electricity is in the summer with the air conditioning units. They all, in the summertime, trying to keep everyone cool. They don't typically get the demand and the surges like this. So they don't even have a lot of those generators working during this time of year. And the forecast about seven days ago said this record cold was coming. We actually knew it was coming, but it was too late. I guess they tried to send people into those generators. They said, try to fire them back up, get these back online. But in a lot of cases, they couldn't do it in time. So, I mean, just a colossal failure of imagination and looking back at history outside of our lives because these events can happen. Isn't the private sector supposed to be efficient? They knew that we had an, a, a, a wave coming down. A week to get a plant started up, that's very possible. Uh, I know about coal plants and how long it takes the oil, the, 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 the water to boil first to start the turbines. But anyhow, 828, come on in today. Thank you so kindly for calling. Hey, Egberto Willis, can you hear me? Hope, how are you doing? I recognize your voice. How are you doing, my friend? I'm doing great. I just called to make sure that you didn't turn into an icicle. <laughs> you, let me tell you something, though. Um, I, 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 I really want to tell you this, Hope. I doctored my pipes for every three yeah. and a half hours. I read up and I said, how long does it take pipes to freeze? Remember, we're in Texas and a lot of stuff isn't insulated, right? So I didn't want to drip right. the water to create a water problem. So what I did is I went ahead every – I set my alarm in the morning or read in the middle of the morning, like 3.30 in the morning. I, I went outside in sub-teen temperatures uh, to, to make sure the water was flowing in every outside pipe and got every pipe in the house with the water flowing just to make sure there was no spots where the ice would get a chance to get solid and move on. So it was tough. Wow. Well, I am so glad that you're doing okay. And I'm watching the farce with you with the uh, the Texas chatter about, oh, you know, it was, there's a problem with solar and, and then all of this BS. And, you know, we've been talking about having to rebuild the grids throughout the United States yes. for over 20 years. It is amazing um, hope. Let me tell you, though, but check out the next one that I'm going to play from Chris Hayes from last night. You're going to love this one because this one okay. really calls out the politicians for really who they are and, to, and, and how they really think that their population, the people who they support or represent, they actually think those people have lesser minds. And we, have to, we don't have to do that. What we have to do is really go out there and talk to those other people because they're really getting it on the bad side, I hope, really getting on the bad side. I agree. I'm going to let you run and play that clip, but I want to let you know about something before I do that. Um, my husband is an electronics geek, and so he's really smart, like you are with engineering and stuff like that. But he built an over unity generator uh -huh. that will run off of, you know, you, you have to charge it to start it, but then it will run and you can take the power that the over unity generator, you know, um, create right. basically and you store it in a battery and, and um he hasn't finished it but we kind of need it during this ice storm i think we're going to have to get busy with this unit because you need to be able to power homes with little units that go in the we are going to talk I mean, about that too hope you're so right yeah tell i think we're getting we're getting close tell your husband take some pictures and send it to me and when he has it done i'm gonna do that when you have it done you guys yeah. come on the show okay Let, let's let's show that thing off you bet. Thanks so much. Thank you, Hope. Have a great one. All right. Anyhow, bye -bye. Norman Reynolds, welcome aboard. Norman went through some tribulations with this great freeze here in Texas. Love to have you here, my brother. You know I love you. Uh, let's see who else is pretty. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay. I have another video to show you guys. I want to show you this piece from Chris Hayes. Chris Hayes does such a good job in preparing the piece it is so important for us to go ahead and see it. Check this out, and then I will take it on the other side because this is the way we have. And by the way, before I go, make sure all of your right wing, right wing friends, and their friends, let them see this and try to get them to watch it objectively. But here it is, and then we'll take it on the other side. This is an awful situation. It's driven by a complex confluence of factors from extreme weather in an era of climate change to an electric infrastructure that's been woefully underdeveloped 
to the idiosyncrasies of Texas' aggressively deregulated and independent energy market. But of course, Fox News and other Republicans saw some kind of suffering, some kind of problem somewhere, and immediately, without missing a beat, right away, tried to turn it into a culture war, in this case, against those damn hippie liberals and their clean energy. The blackouts that are in Texas are being made worse by the failure of wind turbines, many freezing in the icy weather, cutting output in half. And it's raising questions about the Lone Star State's increasing reliance on renewable energy. Now, folks, this is all more proof that green energy just is not ready for prime time. You get sub-freezing temperatures and wind and solar just don't work for power. If this Green New Deal goes forward the way that the uh, Biden administration appears to want it to, then we'll have more events like we've had in Texas all across the country. These wind farms that are frozen, they're an eyesore, they're not efficient, uh, they're not delivering the energy that we want. The windmills failed like the silly fashion accessories they are, and people in Texas died. Silly fashion ex accessories. Now keep in mind, when California was suffering from blackouts last year, Texas Republicans, from Ted Cruz to Dan Patrick and Ken Paxton, were pushing out gloating tweets about how backwards liberal California is. Imagine, imagine how stupid you would have to think your audience is, the contempt you would have to hold them in, to look into the camera and try to sell them on the idea that windmills don't work when it's cold. After Texas, Iowa is the state with the most wind power in the country. If you've never been to Iowa in the winter, I can tell you from personal experience, it gets pretty cold in Iowa, right? Denmark gets nearly half of its energy from wind power. Also, I don't know if you've looked this up, anyone over on Fox News, but Denmark, very cold place in the winter. You don't have to take my word for it, of course. We have the data from Texas. Now, Texas has their own energy grid, okay? It is run by an organization called the Electric Reliability Council of Texas, or ERCOT. A senior director of ERCOT telling Bloomberg today, I quote, while ice has forced some wind turbines to shut down, just as a brutal cold wave drives record electricity demand, that's been the least significant factor in the blackouts. The main factors have been frozen instruments at natural gas, coal, and even nuclear facilities, as well as limited supplies of natural gas. Natural gas pressure, in particular, is one reason power is coming back slower than expected. Wind shutdowns accounted for less than 13% of the total outages, and wind generation has actually exceeded the grid operator's daily forecast through the weekend. Did you get all that? Okay, that's the people that run the Texas grid. Wind power outages are, quote, the least significant factor in the blackouts, and the main factors are frozen instruments at natural gas, coal, and even nuclear facilities. It is just a lie that wind turbines, green energy, are the root causes of the problems in Texas right now. It is a lie like Donald Trump won the election, a lie like there was widespread voter fraud, a lie pumped into millions of people's brains as they watch TV. And let's be clear, this is probably as consequential a lie as any about the election because energy and how we produce it is the single biggest issue this country will face in the medium term. I mean, this stuff is complicated. Let's be clear here, right? Everyone takes the power grid for granted, unless you work on it for a living. It's among the most arcane areas of public policy. It's not like sparking great debate on cable news. But then, a few times a year, something like this happens, and we all this moment where we remember the power grid is the foundation of modern civilization. It is also the key to overcoming climate change. Republicans and right-wing media, they want to take every policy issue and turn it into some painful culture war idiocy. And there's an interest to do it. The fossil fuel companies want this too, right? They want to turn into some culture war idiocy about the libs don't want you to have power. But we have an opportunity. We have a choice collectively as a country. We don't have to have politics about where we get our energy divided along the lines of abortion or, or policing. There's no reason for that to be connected. We can create a modern energy infrastructure that is more resilient to climate change and also cheaper and also serves people better and also can withstand extreme weather events, and also doesn't heat the planet until we are in dire straits. We can do all that. In fact, there's lots of great news happening on the front, but the biggest obstacle will be these charlatans who will take every opportunity to lie to people for profit and for power. And that is the issue. People lying to people. People say, um, let me first give, uh, and I, I need to say this real quickly, let me give the physics of the problem, okay? Numero uno. When air is colder, air is denser, 
So if you have air traveling at 15 miles an hour and it's hot, you get less energy than if you have air at zero degrees or 32 degrees flowing against those blades. So the big lie is somehow cold weather is bad for windmills. Actually, cold weather spins windmills faster because of the density of the air. That's a physics thing. Think about it. The air is denser. The same amount, of, I mean, the same volume of air moving that's denser mean it hits the windmill with more momentum. Okay, here's the other, the other thing. We've, we had regulations. We could have had those windmills with the proper type of heaters to make sure that under this scenario, it doesn't happen. Okay? It doesn't happen. So it is important for us to acknowledge that the problems in Texas has nothing to do with renewables, but a failed regulatory system and a state that, well, we're going to hear from another person what this state does. Now, Eric Hayes says, uh, why are they frozen? They're frozen because they're not heating, because the, the, the liquid that comes from the air goes and it sticks to the surfaces. How do you solve that? Guess what? Airplanes fly in storms. Airplanes fly in snowstorms. Think about it, people. Airplanes fly in snowstorms. They get ice buildup and they have mitigating factors in the air wings to mitigate the ice on the wings. It can be done if we create regulations to do it. But if company A builds one windmill, company B builds one windmill, and company A puts on coolers and the other uh, heaters and the other one doesn't, he's at a financial disadvantage in a capitalist economic system. If energy is run by one entity, which it really should be, they don't have that incentive to depress the price for a better return. Now, brother uh, Eric Scott says, uh, and, and, and this is important because Eric, I, I want to get, you, you, I think you said something to the effect of, why, why not stop talking about it? Uh, uh, so, what, so what are we doing here finger pointing? Why not try and solve it and it's a culmination of things? How can we solve it to culminate things, Brother Eric Hayes? How can we do that if we have the governor of Texas lying to Texans, telling them that the reason why we have these blackouts is because of windmills? That's a lie. We have to point that out. It's not about pointing fingers. It's about telling truth to the American people. So what I'm trying to say is, this is not to say the, the problem. Republicans have no problems lying to their people, just like they tell them about health care. They have killed a lot of people. Their lies kill. That's why we are so emotional about it, Eric. These lies kill. You may work for a company where you get the benefits of not being penalized by the lie. But many Americans are penalized by the lie. We all now, with these blackouts, are being penalized by the lie. They are lying. We must point out the lies. The deregulation of basic services is standard GOP policies, exactly. You have to bash is all and it's is windmills and lack of production too. It is not the windmills at all. Yes, there were windmills out of commission, but the windmills overperformed. Again, because of cold weather and the wind gives more energy per density. This is physics, people. Physics. Okay. Here's the deal. Egberto, here's an example. Damning analysis of Trump's pandemic response to just 40% of you. Exactly. We know that. Okay. Here's the deal, folks. I, I, I didn't realize we were over half the program already, and I haven't gone through my ass. Folks, if you are on YouTube Live, I ask you to support us. We are out here trying to get the truth out. We have the lying governor doing his work, and this lie isn't only perpetrated in Texas. This Texas lie will go through the entire country and try to change the story on green energy, try to change the story on renewable energy. They will try to turn Texas uh, grid failure into a renewable energy failure. That is how they're going to use this. We have to tell the truth, and you have to help us tell the truth by putting it 
out there. We beg of you. We ask you. But here's the other thing. We would like you to become members of our PDR Posse, the PDR Posse run by Bridge MCP. If you go and click that join button under right here, if you're on YouTube, click the join button. If you click the join button and become a part of, of our YouTube, our PDR Posse right now, we'll call you out and put your name on the screen, all that good stuff. But for right now, if you're not on YouTube live, please go to politicsdoneright.com slash YouTube. Again, that is politicsdoneright.com slash YouTube. Please support us. That is how we make a difference. Look, I, I, let, I, I, I'm, I'm serious about this. Think about this. Rick Perry and all these guys are going on every network they can to say, if we do win energy, everybody around America can see what is happening in Texas right now. They are scared to death that that Texans are going through right now could occur to them. We were lucky enough to get a progressive policy arrangement between uh, Biden and progressives where we are going to effect much of the Green New Deal that will make more windmills, will make more solar power, all of that. They would like to stymie that by lying to our uh, half of our, our people who who follow, who, who trust the people on the right. They're going to lie to them to try to knock that possibility out. That's their goal. Their goal is to use this failure in Texas to go ahead and lie to their people and say, you see, if we follow the Green New Deal, which we know creates a lot of new jobs, which do all these things, then what happens in Texas can happen to you. Okay? That is what we have to get around. That is what we have to get around, the lies. We cannot, we have to pass it on to those on the right because they're not bad people. They're just being lied to. And if you trust somebody, if you trust somebody, then the lie becomes more effective. And what we have to do is neutralize the lie. So please go ahead and help us keep this message out. What do we do? We do three to five blogs every day on these different issues that on progressive values, progressive policy, etc. We do three to five videos every day. We do this program, of course, every day. On Tuesday, we do two, two of them. One on KPFT 90.1 FM Houston and the other one uh, on, on the all throughout the internet. But it's important. It is important. We cannot, uh, let's see, Eric says, this is a freak happening, and the big thing is deregulation and being in its own market. This is not a freak thing. Again, if we continue to, to fool ourselves into believing that this is a one-time event, if we start to believe this is a one-time event, it'll happen over and over again. We had this, we have, uh, we, we have all these different weather events occurring, one after the other. Eric, it's not a one-time event. This is a new normal. It's not like we haven't spoken about this before. All the We've talked about this before. We have talked about this before. Anyhow, so please help us keep this message in the forefront. That's what we do. Not only this uh, message on weather, but the message on healthcare, the message on student loans, the message on all these different issues. So please uh, click that. If you are on YouTube, click that join button. Become a member. If you become a member now, we'll put you up on the screen or put a, your name up. Or if you don't want to, we won't. Uh, but if you are not there, go ahead. If you are on, uh, on um, Facebook Live, Go ahead and use that link to become a part of our PDR Posse. Alternatively, you can support us via Patreon. Patreon, we love our Patreon supporters as well. So please go ahead and click on uh, politicsandright.com slash Patreon. Uh, you can also support us via PayPal. That's politicsandright.com slash PayPal. Or you can go ahead and support us by buying our books. Our current book uh, that you see on the screen, it, it's worth it, How to Talk to Your Right-Wing Relatives, Friends, and Neighbors. Uh, you can get that at this Amazon link that I'm putting into the screen right now. Uh, there is the Amazon link in the screen as well. I'll put, uh, if you want to get rid of the middleman, you can come directly to our store where you can get our, our T-shirts like this. You can get our, our, our hoodies. You can get our 
um, face masks or cups. And by the way, you can even get the cup that was designed by one of our members at PDR Posse. Uh, you get the cup, and there is the cup designed by Bridge MCP. Just go ahead and let me put the, the link to that cup on the screen as well. The link to that cup, you can get it right there at uh, uh, that link that I just placed into the screen. Get the, go, go, go ahead and purchase that directly from our store. And by the way, somebody in the room has purchased it, my good friend. Well, a lot of you in the room has purchased, but you haven't sent me pictures. Bridge MCP, where's my picture? Uh, I, I, I want my picture, Bridge, and the other folks in there that I forget that it. I need my picture, Bridge MCP. And here is our good friend, El Señor Norman Reynolds, drinking from the cup. Drinking from the cup. Anyhow, let's go ahead and continue because we have quite a few more videos to show you. But I, I want to tell you why we do this, folks. We have to do this because there is so much lies going around. And, and if we don't get on top of these lies now, it becomes a reality. And unfortunately, that's what we've been seeing. When you have good people like Eric, good people like Mike Cisak, these guys believe the people they trust. Unfortunately, they're trusting the wrong people. Unfortunately, they're trusting liars. Untrust, unfortunately, they're trusting people who are unscientific. Unfortunately, they're trusting people who are using them as cogs, as widgets to bring better to a few. But anyhow, this other, this other video that I have here is, is also important. This one here is um, a journalist here. Let, let's see. Where is my Texas journalist? Uh, this, this Texas journalist here gives the perfect example as to why it is that Texas is... All right, let, me, let me back that up. This Texas journalist shows us exactly what Texas has done and why it did it and why we are in the condition that we're in. Check it out. Texas energy politics are, you could, you could spend your whole life, you could write dissertation after dissertation about it. It's distinct and idiosyncratic. It's got its own grid. It's got its own uh, regulatory body that regulates oil and gas. You've got the fossil fuel capital of the world. It's also a big wind generator. What, what is happening here? Why this breakdown? Well, obviously, our main focus is on the millions of people who, as Judge Hidalgo talked about in her own part of the state, are without power and heat, water, food. But if we're going to talk about what happened here, how we got here, this Texas got a Texas moment for the ages. I think it has basically three key features to it, uh, familiar to anybody who's followed the politics of the state over the last couple of decades. The first is a slavish devotion to markets. Right. Markets are the be all and end all. Markets fix everything. That's the attitude about uh, everything here in the state of Texas, except when they don't fix things. And in this case, markets did not uh, uh, fix things, did not anticipate the problem adequately and have left us where we are. The second is a stubborn independence. You alluded to this earlier, that we don't want to be overregulated. We don't want to be told what to do, especially by the evil federal government who we sue and sue to keep at a safe distance. If you go back and read the story that we in the Texas Tribune published 10 years ago by Kate Galbraith about the electric grid problems at that time, yep. what she says then is true today. That is the reason that we have our own grid is because we don't want to deal with the feds. The third is right. that unshakable belief in our own awesomeness that you referred to, where you have politicians in Texas dunking on the state of California last year. The message of those tweets is that the poli policies of Democratic leaders in blue states cause these problems. This, Chris, the last 48 hours is a goose meets gander moment for Texas. That's yeah. what I think is going on. Exactly. What we're looking at is a condition created by the Republican politicians in Texas. Don't let anybody fool you. Don't let them tell you it's, it's green energy. Don't let them tell you it was unexpected. We all expected this 10 years ago. The government, the federal government suggested to Texas, they can only suggest because they're not on the grid. They suggested to Texas that they winterize their equipment because this was coming. They knew it. They didn't do it. Those are the people we elect. Eric says, "Not a cog widget or person who has an a person who has an opinion." Uh, and that you, let me tell you, I watch all channels. I watch CNN, MSNBC, Fox. Uh, when I have the spirit to, I would even watch OANN. But let, let me tell you something, okay? When I turn on Fox News, if they are lying when they say that somehow the windmills had something to do with this blackout, how can I come to you as a truth teller 
and play a Fox piece other than to show you the Fox pieces that MSNBC showed that proved they were lying. ERCOT, who is run by the governor, says the governor is lying. They don't say he's lying. They just tell the truth. And when you compare the truth to what the governor is saying, the governor is lying. So let's, let's get real. These guys are liars. The problem is Texas caused this problem. Punto y final. Uh, I want you to now listen to uh, this, uh, this judge. I think I played this yesterday, but I think it needs to be played again because he is one of the most cogent people uh, or, or explained it in the most cogent fashion. Check this out. A lot of local officials out there who are wondering what the heck is going on in Texas, what happened to the power grid, and what do all these outages mean for vaccine storage? Joining me now is the chief executive of Dallas County, Judge Clay Jenkins. Judge, thank you so much for joining us. Um, can I just ask you, I think a lot of us looking at Texas right now are wondering, it's on its own power grid. It's not part of the power grids of the rest of the country. What exactly went wrong here? What went wrong here was the last uh, two governors had policies, the current governor and the one that, uh, that was before him, had policies that valued uh, rock bottom prices for, for um, commercial large users um, over um, the all else, including protecting residential customers uh, when there is a, a, an extreme weather event. Uh, and so what you see is in all the other states around us, like Oklahoma, who have similar weather, they're not seeing that problem because they, they have regulatory requirements that'll, that require you to winterize uh, your equipment. If you're a generator, require you to either use a certain material or bury at a certain depth if you're a gas pipeline company. But here in uh, Texas, gas pipelines are regulated by a group called the Texas Railroad Commission, and uh, uh, those are all elected officials. And then uh, the generation is done by appointees of Governor Perry in the past and now Governor Abbott. And they simply have not asked for the sort of protections for consumers that are present in the other 49 states. Does that line up with the accusation that I was reading in the Houston Chronicle today that, that basically the, the ERCOT grid, and excuse me if I'm mispronouncing it, collapsed in exactly the same manner as what, what this person is calling the old Soviet Union? It limped along on underinvestment and neglect until it finally broke under predictable circumstances. Basically that they weren't charging enough for the electricity that they were generating, that cost more to generate it than it did to, uh, than they were taking in. Yeah, um, that's right. It costs a little bit more, for instance, to put a winter package on your generation, whether that be a wind turbine or, or a uh, lignite coal, which we don't have much of anymore, or a gas power plant. Uh, that wasn't required. You can't expect the, the uh, companies to do something that's not required that would make their plant cost more than their competitor's plant. Uh, and then and that all falls on the governor. And then you've got the Railroad Commission, which is three other elected officials. And those officials didn't require those gas pipelines to be buried deep enough or to use the right material to not freeze. So one of the big problems that we have right now with generation is the plants uh, can't operate because the gas that is going to that plant um, is, is um, frozen. And that's on the Railroad Commission, three elected Republicans. And then the rest of the problems fall on the regulation done by ERCOT uh, at the direction of, of the last two governors who appoint uh, the boards there and basically tell them uh, what to do. Yeah, it's just like, you know, truly the perfect storm hit you guys down there or hit you guys down in Texas. Um, what well, a, what a mess. storm that hit uh, us. We wish you, we wish the you. storm that hit us, though, hit us with the decisions that uh, governors made over the last 10 years. Bad weather is predictable, and bad policy has a consequence when bad uh, things happen. That is the most important statement. Bad weather is predictable. Bad policy kills when you don't prepare 
for a predictable event. And that is what our government uh, has done. That is what we've done continuously over and over. And it goes from what that guy said. We are, we, we believe simply in market-based, but it's really not market-based. It's crony market-based ripping off the average American citizen. That's what it's all about. Uh, Anton Christopher uh, McKerney says... Uh, they are responsible for all the current failure in the entire planet with their vain, feudal era thinking. <laughs> oh, wow. That was poetic. All right. Let me salute all my great people here. Uh, bad weather is predictable. Again, bad weather is also predictable. And yet what's funny is it's, it's, it also was predictable in the early, early days before we had all the satellites and all these other good things. That's why we can tell you about La Nina, El Nino, and all these other things. It's not predictable on an on a, on a individual item basis, but it is predictable in the aggregate. And that's how we can come across with climate change. That's how we can say climate will change before it actually happens and kick us in the butt. But for those who don't want to follow science, they can say, well, it never happened before. We know, but every day we go by, we are pumping more stuff in the atmosphere, which changes the chemistry, right? Which can changes the volume of different items, in it, right? Come on, guys. How could, it's predictable in the sense that you know it's going to happen eventually. You know, I mean, Rob, that is so, that is so apropos, but let me just say one other thing. It's a, I want to give it a little bit more finiteness than that, because we can tell that it will occur based on certain, uh, certain behaviors in, within the system itself, makeup within the system itself. Anyhow, I want to salute all my people again. Breeze MCP, welcome aboard. Uh, Rob Lindar, welcome aboard. Christine Park, welcome aboard. Indiana Bones, welcome aboard. Eric Hayes, welcome aboard. Mike Cisak, welcome aboard. Anton Christopher McKearney, welcome aboard. Uh, let's see. Uh, where else have we gone? Breeze MCP, welcome aboard. Uh, uh, let's see, Michael Rutten, welcome aboard. Uh, Christine Park, I think I got you. Have you queued? Got you. Uh, para ver. Uh, Carmen Nurse, welcome aboard. Chris, I got Christine Park. Uh, I got Indiana Bones. Uh, James Norris, thank you for that that piece there. True. Uh, uh, Bruce Pollard, welcome aboard. Norman Reynolds, welcome aboard. Uh, let's see, Linda E, como estas, mi amiga? And let's see who else is here. Bear with me. Headache. May Wood. Welcome aboard. I haven't seen you in a little while, but great having you here in the room. Uh, I hope you've been listening even though you haven't been in the room. John Christial Lindahl, welcome aboard. Uh, let's see who else is in here. Man, I've got a lot of you great guys in here, all of you, right, left, middle, everything. Okay, let's see, let's see. I got Lindahl already. Teresa Morrison, welcome aboard. Uh, what, what? That's oh, that's not a name. Oh wow, I'm still wow. Okay, lot more people. I'm getting to you guys. Uh, Nanette Bird Smith, welcome aboard. Um, uh, and let's see, <laughs> insulin going up. Welcome aboard. <laughs> Carl Cox, welcome aboard. Uh, let's see who else is here. Linda E, I got you. And I think I'm almost there to the top. If I haven't called you out. Brian, uh, let's see, Brian Miner, welcome aboard. If I haven't called you out, please put your, just send a quick message underneath and I'll call you because I'm scrolling real fast. And you know what happens when you scroll fast and when your eyes are not as efficient as they used to be. Okay, I'm scrolling all the way down now. I'm scrolling all the way down. I think I, so much, Christine Park says, Carl Cox, welcome aboard. Uh, so much cheaper in the long run when you consider the damage that, you know, but here's a problem, Christine. These people put a false value on life. Uh, and that is what I hate about, you know, you're going to hear, when you listen to the interview that I did with um, Professor Dr. Richard Wolf, you're going to, we have a good conversation on capitalism and how, uh, you know, how the type of capitalism we practice, how it really hurts humanity. We talk a whole lot about that, among other things. And then you're going to, so, I mean, I, I'll probably play, I don't know, maybe I'll do Richard Richard tomorrow, but I'm not sure. Let's see. Barbara Fetante, Egberto, you need to connect with Cristina Sunsun Ramirez. I can help if you connect. Uh, please let her know. I, 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 I've, I've, uh, I've 
gone before and I think I've sent some stuff to her people and never got a response. But if you have some contact with her, uh, Barbara, go ahead and tell her I would love to have her on anytime. Uh, I, I, love, I love her work. You know, she's a very, she's real with the system. Hey, thank you, R. Lindor. Welcome aboard. We have our new, uh, sal Bridge MCP, I'm pretty sure is going to send you a salute right now to say thank you so kindly for joining our, our posse. We appreciate you joining our posse. So welcome aboard our newest posse member. I'm going to put you up. I'm doing it real quick right now. I'm going to put, see if I can get you up on the screen. Get you up on the screen. You know, it kind of goes, it's like, Egberto, hurry, hurry, hurry. The program is almost over. And you want to tell all your new people, hello and welcome aboard. And I'm going to get to it. I'm going to get to it because I want people to see your name. Here we go. Welcome aboard our newest member. Our newest member is RJ Lind or or Lindor. Or Lindor, thank you so kindly for becoming a part of the PDR Posse. Folks, just click that. If you're on YouTube, click that join button like uh, R did, and uh, you can become a part of the PDR Posse. We all need you. R Lindor, please follow R Lindor's lead to become our newest PDR policy, PDR Posse member. If you are not on YouTube live right now, I'm going to give you a link on Facebook and inst everywhere else that says go to that link, politicsunright.com slash YouTube, politicsunright.com slash YouTube, and you can become a part of our YouTube Posse. Alternatively, you can support us by going to politicsunright.com slash Patreon. Patreon is spelled P-A-T-R-E-O-N. P-A-T-R-E-O-N, or you can support us via PayPal, which is politicsandright.com slash PayPal, politicsandright.com slash PayPal. You can go to our store and get our books. You can go to our store and get our, our, our mugs, our T-shirts, our hoodies, politicsandright.com slash store. Look, I got to go, but I couldn't do this without all of you. I really could not do this without all of you. It's, it's hard, but you know what? It is us, and we're going to make a difference. A lot of people think, why do you do that? It's not, you're not going to make a difference. The powers that be, the powers my butt. We are still one person, one vote. One person, one vote. We can either acquiesce to the minority, that one percent who, we can acquiesce to the minority. Or we can engage our brothers and sisters. You see, the top tries to use all the isms to break us up. Indiana Bones, thank you so kindly. Indiana Bones, thank you so kindly for becoming a member. And you know what? It looks like I'm going to go over by a minute because just like I did with, uh, with uh, our other uh, brother there, or, or I don't know if or it's a brother or not, uh, brother or sister, I am going to do with you. We want to get your name up there as well. So you will be there as well, Indiana Bones. Uh, let's go ahead and get Indiana Bones up there. Let's see if Indiana Bones... Okay, I got to uh, get a, give it another name, I guess. Anyhow, so look, we can, either, we can do one of two things. We can go ahead and assume that we, we just leave it we just leave it to them. In other words, we just leave it to the plutocracy. We just leave it. After all, who are we? They are, they are the powers, right? Or we can say, no. We are going to make a difference. We are going to make a difference. And that's what I want to do. I want us to make a difference. Ah, that didn't come out the way it should. So let's, let's put it under a different name. Let's see if that, that'll work better. But we want to make a difference, people. So please, engage everybody. Engage. Don't ever give up. Don't let them make you believe that you are, that you are not, that, that they can make it without you. Remember, this system was created by you. This system is maintained by you. This all goes through you. Indiana uh, Bones, I can't get your thing up on the screen right now for some reason. 
we'll do it on a, at another time. But I want to thank you so kindly, Indiana Bones, for being our latest member of the PDR Posse. And anybody else who can join the PDR Posse, just click that join button and become it or the link that we put in there. Look, I got to get out of here. My name is Egberto Willies. This is Politics Done Right. And you know how I end this baby. I am what? Out! We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to, trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join.